What is RouterOS for x86? The x86 is a type of complex instruction set computer, which sounds bizarre and obscure, but it is in fact the most common architecture type in the market for desktop computers and servers. So the odds are that if you have an old computer or an unused server that is just collecting dust, you can turn it into a powerful router. Or perhaps you are a small ISP and you can't find the right router for the job. Well then you could just build your own with router OS. Let me demonstrate how simple it is to do this. If you look at our downloads page, you might have noticed that one of the architectures is x86. First on the list, you have regular NPK downloads of the main package and extra packages as usual. You can use these for upgrades, but further, there is a CD image, which is an ISO file and an image, which is an IMG image file. And we can use these to do the initial installation. I'm making a bootable USB, so I will get the latter one. Now I have downloaded version 7, which supports only 64-bit CPUs. But if you have an older 32-bit CPU, you might still be able to get RouterOS running, as the older version 6 still has 32-bit support. Ok, let's create the bootable USB. You can use any software you like, but if you are on Linux, the most simple method is probably DD. Insert the USB drive and find the name of your drive with the lsblk command. Alternatively, you could use the fdiskl. My laptop only has an NVMe drive, so when I plugged in the USB, it was given the SDA name. But for most people, if your operating system is installed on a SATA disk, your main disk drive will be named SDA, and the USB drive will be added as an SDB or maybe SDC, Whatever the case, make sure you get the correct name, as the next command could wipe your hard drive if you confuse the disk names. So once you got the correct name, type sudo ddif equals. This is where you specify the image file location. For me, it is in my downloads section. Continue with of equals slash dev slash the name of your USB disk. So for me, that is SDA and then status equals progress so that you can see write progress and finally add o flag equals sync. The sync flag makes sure that all the files have truly finished copying and that it is safe to remove the drive or reboot. But you could also type the sync command after the dd command. The installation is very straightforward and I won't install RouterOS on this computer but I have a server that I can access remotely, so I will show you the next steps on there. I'm on the boot menu of my server, similar to how you could access the boot menu of your own computer. I already inserted a Kingston Data Traveler USB drive with the RouterOS image. Ok, as you can see there is an option to install RouterOS. After a simple hardware check, we can see that I have two 8 terabyte hard disk drives. I'm just going to install it on one of these. After that, just type I followed by enter. Once the installation is complete, if you open system resources, you can see that this is not your average router. After the installation, you will find that there is no license key and you are given 24 hours to try out the operating system. So to continue to use it afterwards, you will need to purchase a key from our website. To learn more about license keys and the available levels, we have a video on that as well. Once you know what level you need, go on our web page, open your account and under web orders, click on purchase a RouterOS license key. There you will be prompted for the software ID that can be viewed on your device. But note that once you purchase a license key for x86, it is tied to the physical disk that RouterOS is installed on. So if you were to replace the disk later, the old key will no longer apply. Finally, I would like to add that most network interface cards are supported by default, but if yours is not supported, it is likely because RouterOS is based on Linux kernel 563 and the support for your NIC was not included in that kernel. But don't worry, most likely we can still add the support manually. So if that is the case with your device, please contact Microtech support and send us 
a supo.rev file generated on your x86 and we will help you 